How would you like to grow your own fossil? It's easy. All you need is one of these and some of what I've got in this container. I'll just get some water and we can sprinkle some of these into it and we can come back later and see what kind of fossil they've grown into. And what do you get when you plant this nut? Come with me into the forest and I'll show you. Well, this is what you get. A cycad with its dark green leaves and its crop of poisonous seeds, such as this one that we showed you before. The Aborigines used to eat it by slicing it, drying it and fermenting it for several weeks. Not exactly what you'd call fast food, but the cycad today is exactly the same as it was when the last dinosaur walked past. Same is true of another attractive little plant commonly known as a tassel fern. It really isn't a fern at all. It belongs in the lycopod family. You find them growing along the wet edges of streams in swamps or rainforest trees like this one. And like the cycad, a tassel fern would have been readily recognised by the biggest blundering brontosaurus. In fact, this plant is surprisingly similar to what many people commonly regard as one of the oldest land plant fossils in Australia. This fossil goes under the rather profound title of Barognathia longifolia, which we've since discovered is a fancy name for a dead tassel fern. It seems tassel ferns haven't changed either. This fossil, by the way, was found in the Silurian rocks of Victoria. And don't be put off by the term Silurian. It was simply a word invented by Scotsman Sir Roderick Murchison uh, in honour of an extinct warlike tribe of Britons who lived along the borderland of Wales, where these rocks were first studied. Since then, any rocks around the world that have got fossils similar to that area have been given the name Silurian. Fossils, such as this fish from the shales of Wyoming, or this fern from the coal seams of Nova Scotia, are the buried remains of plants and animals that have been preserved in the rocks. They give us a good idea of what life in the past was really like. If you today were taken and thrown into the acidy waters of a peat bog and your body preserved by the chemicals in the bog, you too could acquire fame as a fossil, if anybody found you, that is. Most people think of fossils as dead things, but the surprising thing is that the world is full of fossils which are well and truly still alive. Your gardens and carpets are full of them. Springtails and silverfish is what I mean. They're both living fossils. In fact, the term living fossil has come to mean any animal or plant whose fossil ancestor is just as easy to recognise in the rocks as the living creature today. They haven't changed since they first appeared on the face of this planet. Textbooks usually proclaim that life has been changing or evolving and fossils provide some of the best evidence for this. Yet knowledge of the large number of living fossils has been a closely guarded professional secret with few exceptions such as this. A coelacanth fish caught off the coast of Africa just before Christmas Day in 1938 after having been claimed in the textbooks as extinct since the time of the dinosaurs. Many scientists hope to have at last had their hands on an example of an animal evolving from a fish to a frog-like creature. But the coelacanth has been so successful at being a coelacanth, it has not been evolving into anything else. In the time it was supposed to be extinct, in fact in all the time since it first appeared in Devonian rocks, it has faithfully produced replicas of coelacanths. It was and is a living fossil. Devonian rocks form some of the most spectacular scenery on the face of this earth. Places such as Table Mountain in South Africa, or the Catskills in North America, or the Rhineland area of Eastern Europe are all Devonian. They have fossils in them which are similar to the area of Devon in the United Kingdom, where these rocks were first studied. And for those of you who are fishermen, you find it interesting to know that Devonian rocks are full of fish. Apart from that rare and publicised example of a living fossil such as Ixelacanth, the existence of vast numbers of such creatures has been one of the best kept professional secrets amongst the world of those who know about fossils. It's been hidden in technical terms, disguised in scientific jargonese. If I was to tell you that Heterodontus japonicus and Rhizocrinus lofotensis were undergoing a period of stasis in their evolution, the only impression I'd leave most of you with is that things are evolving. But what I really said was that the common old Port Jackson shark, which lives in the waters alongside the rather famous Opera House in Sydney, Australia, shows no evidence of evolving and never has. Neither does the sea lily, 
they are both as stable and unchanging as they've always been. What you're about to see on this program is a world full of creatures whose fossil ancestors are as easy to recognize today as they ever have been. We still have their living descendants with us. 